Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. The scribe of the academia, Alhatham, is now officially a collectible husbando. In today's video, we'll see if a Constellation Zero Alhatham's mirrors shatter our expectations or are just a reflection of what he could have been. After many epic adventures with the elusive and enigmatic scribe, Alhatham, we finally get to build him ourselves. My Alhatham is at level 90 and is using a Refinement 5 Iron Sting. For his artifacts, he is using the 4-piece Gilded Dreams with an Elemental Mastery Timepiece, Dendro Damage Goblet, and Crit Circlet. He is of course at Constellation Zero throughout this entire video, and his talents are at 8, 9, and 8. Cool. As usual, let's kick things off, much like how Alhatham kicks his sword by taking a look at his kit, starting with his normal attacks, Abductive Reasoning. Alhatham's normal attacks consist of five parts, where he stylishly kicks and conjures up a second sword. Without infusion though, they are doing some pretty mediocre physical damage. His charge attacks, however, generate a mirror, once every 12 seconds via his passive 1. While his mirror is active, his basic attacks are then converted into dendro damage, and after the mirror expires, it's back to physical damage for his basic attacks. Up next is his elemental skill, Universality, an elaboration on form. It gets a bit complicated. Alhatham rushes forward quickly and generates two mirrors if he started off with zero mirrors. One mirror expires every four seconds. Alhatham can also aim his elemental skill in the air. which he can follow up with a plunge attack that activates his passive 1, allowing him to efficiently generate 3 mirrors. Mirrors do mirror projection attacks when you hit an enemy with one of Alhatham's other things, which are different depending on the number of mirrors he has active. As we can see in this repeating clip, the 3 mirror version rains down a bunch of green globs that hits 3 times, the 2 mirror version swings a green shuriken which hits 2 times, and the 1 mirror version swipes right with a green sword thing that hits 1 time. And you see this awesome split screen editing with helpful text to explain stuff? Well this type of stuff does take a lot of time and effort and you can reward me for this time and effort by gently clicking that subscribe button. No need to smash it. My goal by the end of this year is to reach 500,000 subscribers which is crazy to me. And you have my deepest gratitude for simply gently clicking on that subscribe button. Next is Elemental Burst, Particular Field Fetters of Phenomena. It's a bit complicated as well, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can. He consumes however many mirrors that he might have. Each mirror consumed adds two additional slashes on top of the base four slashes. After his burst ends, he generates three minus the number of mirrors consumed. As we can see, this is some very reasonable raw danger damage from his elemental burst. Let's now actually use everything in his kit. With just his raw dendro damage, Alhatham was able to single cycle the Cryer Regisvine. This is pretty impressive given how his kit is clearly built around spread damage. Speaking of which, let's next see how he does with spread damage against our Regisvine friend. Sadly, our poor plant friend stood absolutely no chance once spreads were involved. We're going to need to take this to a meteor target, like the robot chicken. Yeah. 
Well now, that's actually extremely impressive. Alhaitham was able to take advantage of his potentially long field time to one cycle our lack of meat meteor robot chicken friend. I was actually both surprised and impressed by his spread damage capabilities. From this clip we can also gather that he has the following ICDs. His normals and charge attacks share an ICD and have the standard 3 hit ICD. His projection attacks have 2 hit ICDs which are shared across multiple waves of mirrors and his elemental burst has the standard 3 hit ICD. In other words, Al Haytham does a ton of dendro application and thus he does a ton of spread damage. But as always, Genshin Impact is a game where you use 4 characters. Let's see how he does in a full Hyper Boom team with a Sacrificial Xing Cho, Tokabo Shigure, Kuki Shinobu, and Favonius Dendro Traveler. <laughs> Well, unsurprisingly, if Al Haytham was basically able to solo spread our robot chicken friend, adding both Xingqiu's water swords and hyper blooms led to a grotesque and expedited murdering of our robot chicken friend. We're going to need to take this to even beefier targets, and let's see if this team can hold up in the hardest of all content in Genshin Impact, Abyss 12. Given the single target nature of Hyper Bloom, unsurprisingly the perpetual mechanical array in 1211 doesn't appear to be much of a challenge. Alhatham is an incredibly smooth driver for this team, and by timing his charge attacks and elemental skill, he's able to extend the duration of having 3 mirrors active, thus doing the strongest 3 mirror projection attacks. In just a single team rotation, this Hyper Bloom Alhatham team was effortlessly able to put our perpetual LEGO array into perpetual panic mode after which it's just a matter of finishing off its minion and its sad pile of Legos at the end. Twelve two one is probably the easiest part of this Abyss 12, and well it was trivial for this team to crush. I decided to be energy conscious and conserve their bursts for 12-3-1, and took my sweet time by not using a second round of elemental bursts. This team though is also capable of doing decent damage even without their elemental bursts, thanks to Kuki allowing Alhaitham to spread, as well as Alhaitham being able to generate 3 mirrors even without his burst, along with a couple hyper blooms from Xingqiu's elemental skill. Anyway, a trivial chamber for this team to clear. 1231 is actually a pretty solid counter to this team, given our Dendro Mushroom Chicken's massive Dendro resistance. However, it didn't even feel like the Dendro Chicken was super resistant to Dendro, with how effortlessly and easily this team shredded our favorite Panda Express dish, Mushroom Chicken. While it did take two full rotations and a bit of extra effort after that, this team was able to destroy even an enemy that heavily resists Dendro. 1211 was completed in 53 seconds, 1221 in 32 seconds, and 1231 in 54 seconds. All of these are stellar times, well under the recommended 90 seconds for each of them. And I've even got a bonus clip with this team against the world's most annoying flying wolf snake abomination. Usually you really want to bring a Geo character, but this team was able to single cycle the golden wolf lord, thus bypassing its totally fair move of being invincible and super high up in the air attack. I'm not sure there's actually very many teams with just a single Constellation Zero 5 star character using a completely free to play weapon that can single cycle the golden wolf lord. So yeah, if you can't tell by now, I think Alhatham is a great character. We don't really have a smooth and exceptional on-field Dendro driver until now. Not only did we get one, we got the Bugatti of on-field Dendro drivers. If you're looking for a smooth and powerful on-field Dendro driver, then Alhatham is an amazing character. Him being able to spam normal attacks effortlessly, thus driving abilities like Xing Chou, with sword poise makes him a very smooth and responsive character. Alhatham does require some mirror management as well as some energy support as his burst is critical for generating 3 mirrors at a time, so do keep that in mind. 
Now, Haytham is a great driver for both Hyper Bloom and Burgeon as well, and heck, he can even be ran in an aggravate spread focused team. Overall, Haytham is just a very flexible on field Dendro driver. Let me know what you think about our favorite Brainiac down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out. Let's <laughs> go.